the Fallout series is normalizing incest, cannibalism, and Masonic ideas like the inversion of good with evil and is showing us how groups of people believe order can be created out of manufactured chaos. This series focuses on three characters, Lucy, Maximus, and the Ghoul. Lucy being the first one we are introduced to, she is living in a fallout shelter called a vault. It is one of three that are interconnected. 31, 32, and she is living in, of course, 33. These numbers were chosen for their value in Freemasonry. The third highest degrees being 31, then 32, and 33 at the very top. Lucy's name also has significance because it is a reference to Lucifer, the fallen angel. In Freemasonry, Lucifer is hidden at the 33rd degree, ultimately being the hidden god of Freemasonry. In a later episode, in a flashback, Lucy is shown holding an apple. This is a reference to the forbidden fruit of the Tree of Knowledge written about in the Book of Genesis. We've recently seen the name Lucy also used in the Hunger Games Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes a movie also rich in Freemasonic symbolism. To keep genetic diversity in the three vaults, they trade members in a sort of arranged marriage situation. But weirdly, nobody is off limits for recreational sex. After 10 years of cousin stuff, I'm definitely excited for the real thing. Lucy, I love you. We all know that, Jen. Messing around with your cousin, it's all well and good for kids, but it's not a sustainable long-term sexual you know? Lucy is given a husband from Vault 32, but he turns out to be a bad guy and she has to kill him, which she tries to do on a Masonic checkerboard floor. But he later comes back only to be murdered by her father. This checkerboard floor is sometimes referred to as tessellated pavement or Moses pavement, but what I like to call it is a ritual sacrifice floor because like what we see in Fallout, Ritual sacrifices and mock sacrifices take place on this checkerboard flooring. We also see goddess worship being done by a civilization that has moved into an abandoned vault. The main antagonist, at least she is for the first season, is referred to as Moldava. She is highly revered by this group. There is implied sex magic in the form of an orgy, which we don't get to see, as well as blood drinking. Moldava is leading a resistance against the Voltec company, which is acting as a sort of shadow government. She hopes to get a part to add to the Tesla coil and liberate humanity from Voltec with free energy. The Griffith Observatory is a popular location in which many films have been shot, including La La Land, The Terminator, and Yes Man. This location is also important for the plot of Fallout because the Tesla coil is actually located in an exhibit at the Griffith Observatory. There are a few references to Tesla and the Tesla coil throughout the show and games. Outside of the observatory, which we see in the final episode, is the armillary. In reality, this sits atop an obelisk. Surrounding the bottom of this obelisk are figures carved from stone. Galileo, Hipparchus, Newton, Kepler, and a long-fingered Copernicus. Actually, they all have long fingers. There's also a sundial that gets updated when daylight savings starts and finishes. The observatory isn't the only time we are shown solar symbolism. During Lucy's wedding, her father is giving a speech. On the right of the screen is a phallus, and on the left is a sun. Two very common symbols in Freemasonry. They love suns and phalluses. During his speech, Lucy's father is talking about how they are about a generation away from being able to repopulate the surface. He describes the outside world as being lawless and the people as savage. Now after 200 years, we don't know much about what's up there. 
desperation, violence, lawlessness. These survivors will need to be shown a better way. And he basically says they will bring the order to the chaos that is the surface. Which is funny because we later find out in the final episode that the chaos was actually manufactured, as it always is. But we're talking about making a significant investment based on a hypothetical. How can you guarantee results? By dropping the bomb ourselves. The Brotherhood of Steel seem to be inspired by the Knights Templar. Many similarities can be found between them. In the show, the Brotherhood venture out to find what they call relics, uh, which is just old technology. In the same way, the Knights Templar journeyed out to find relics. They both seem somewhat religious, though the Brotherhood looks more like a cult. They both have the best technology for their time, and they both have ranks of scribes and knights. I've seen a lot of people complaining online about how woke the casting is. This comment on Reddit sums up what most people have been saying. The cowboy has a black daughter. About one third of the cast is non-white. Two of the three members of Vault 33 are black. The main character, Lucy, is a badass woman. The second main character, Maximus, is a black guy. The leader of the raiders is an Indian woman. There is a transgender man or non-binary person in the Brotherhood of Steel. Some of the white men are made to look bad. Examples, Lucy's brother is a weak coward, her cousin is an incel, and her husband is a piece of trash. Also, the old white guys in the Brotherhood. This is all from one episode. I'm not saying anything is the matter with any one of these, but when you add it all up, I can completely see why people say slash think it's woke. What we are watching is created for the purpose of social engineering and propaganda. The woke cast, I feel anyway, should be the least of our worries because as we discussed earlier, there are other more nefarious ideas being propagated in this TV show. One of my favorite examples I like to mention when discussing propaganda is that the co-founder of Netflix, Mark Bernays Randolph is a relative of both Sigmund Freud, the psychologist, and Edward Bernays, the propaganda guy. Though it's possible for people to form ideas that are different from their parents and relatives, people don't get to the position that Mark Randolph is in without conforming to the status quo of the elite. The truth is... The game was rigged from the start. This show was executive produced by both Jonathan Nolan and his partner, Lisa Joy, who were together the creators of the deeply symbolic and Gnostic television show, Westworld. Jonathan Nolan is the brother of Christopher Nolan, director of such propaganda pieces as The Dark Knight, Tenant, and Oppenheimer. The brothers have a close working relationship, co-writing for each other's films. Jonathan Nolan was also work, has also worked with production designer Nathan Crowley while creating Westworld. Nathan Crowley being a relative of the infamous occultist Alistair Crowley. Whenever anyone creates anything, they will be influenced by their personal bias. I have a Christian bias, so that will be reflected in my videos. In the same way, people that create films and shows are also influenced by their belief systems. There's a pretty cool IMBD list of Gnostic films on that list is Alejandro Hodowoski's film, The Holy Mountain. Hodowoski has an interest in the occult, and this is thereby reflected in his film. In addition, when making the Gnostic film, The Barbie Movie, according to Margot Robbie, Greta Gerwig, the director, wanted to position Barbie as a deity. And I would argue she did exactly that through placing Barbie in the role of the Gnostic Sophia. 
Jonathan Nolan and Elisa Joy seem to be doing a similar thing by inserting Masonic symbolism into their television show. Besides all of the obvious Masonic symbolism, our minds are also being programmed to accept such unacceptable things as cannibalism. Sometimes a fella's gotta eat a fella. Incest. After 10 years of cousin stuff, I'm definitely excited for the real thing. And the inversion of good with evil by placing a character representative of Lucifer as the protagonist or the hero of the story. This will slowly change the public's perception of this evil entity. Okie dokie. I'm curious how the rest of this show will play out and what symbolism we are yet to see. Lucy and the ghoul seem as though they will collaborate bound together by a vendetta against the vault company. We may learn more of the ghoul's backstory and Maximus seems as though he's being set up to potentially become a villain as the leader of the Brotherhood. My prediction, based on what we've seen so far, is that Lucy, as the representation of Lucifer, will likely bring some sort of peace to the world or act as some sort of saviour, like we've seen before in past TV shows. The Lucifer character is often set up as a saviour. In the show Lucifer, Lucifer often saves Chloe, and in Childhood's End, the devil slash alien brings years of peace. And I think that the Fallout show will become another example of this, with Lucy probably leading people out of the vaults into a new world on the surface, or something similar. As always, thank you all very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.